The Plumbing Marketing Profits Podcast. Interviews with million dollar plus plumbing and HVAC business owners on how they market and grow their companies in today's economy. Hear directly from the most successful leaders in your business and discover what they are doing to keep their phone ringing, trucks running, and businesses booming. With your host, Josh Nelson. Well, hey, this is Josh Nelson with Plumbing and HVAC SEO. And I want to welcome you to this episode of the Plumbing and HVAC Marketing Profits Podcast. Today, we're super excited to be interviewing Nicholas Rizzo from PAC Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Uh, they're a full-service contractor, plumbing HVAC, uh, serving the greater Staten Island market. And uh, they've had some great growth over the last year. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're, they've grown from four trucks to, to six trucks and on pace to do $2.4 million this year. Uh, Nick shares some really cool insights on how they're leveraging the internet, uh, social media, email marketing, and a variety of other cool internet marketing strategies to keep the phone ringing, trucks running, and business booming. So I really love this episode. Check it out. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Allison, and I am interviewing Nick, the marketing manager over at Pack Plumbing. This is for our engaged newsletter and our podcast. And so, Nick, thank you again for joining us today. Can you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Pack Plumbing? Sure. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Allison, for asking me to come on. Uh, so, yeah, Pack Plumbing uh, has been around for uh, about 40 years uh, over in uh, Staten Island, serving local communities in the New York area. Uh, the, the business was started by the Campione family, uh, Mr. Paul Campione Sr. Uh, started the business back in 1978, and then um, his son, Paul Campione, who's the owner now, uh, was going to school, earning uh, his plumbing license, and then uh, a little... Uh, a few years after that, he developed the heating and air conditioning traits, so then the business eventually became PAC Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning in the early 90s. So uh, I've been here for a little over two years now. I started as, as a customer service representative and basically a CSR, just answering phone calls and then... While the business was, uh, while I came here, we were undergoing a big change because uh, before I came here, I used to be primarily a construction company. So we, Eric, uh, our operations manager, rewrote the business plan to uh, be mostly residential. So we started doing the residential side of the business. And um, when I came on, I took over the marketing role. So uh, that's kind of where we are here. And from CSR to marketing manager to a little bit of everything, that's kind of my role at PAC. That's amazing. So then, um, you know, it's not uncommon for a lot of people to come in as a CSR and then kind of work their way up to, to something like a marketing manager. So uh, one, congratulations on that. And, and two, can you tell us a little bit about maybe how big the company is, uh, the number of trucks that you guys have? Um, we already talked about the services. So uh, you were originally just plumbing and now you're plumbing, heating and air conditioning. Did that, you know, bringing on that second industry, did that take a toll on the company? How many, you know, how many technicians did you have to bring on board for that to happen? Yeah, so uh, basically when I came here, I mean, one thing I could say about this company, it, it, it's all about growth. Uh, you know, I started, like I said, as a CSR, and then quickly, you know, I, I was growing into other roles. And, you know, we when I came here, we, we started with about four trucks on the road. Then about a year after, we got to five, and now recently, about a month, month ago, we got to six. So, you know, the growth is definitely, uh, it, it's progressing every year. Uh, last year, we did about $2.1 in revenue. Uh, this year, we're looking at an increase to up to $2.4 in revenue. We've increased the number of techs we've brought on two this year. Uh, we keep increasing office personnel and making a lot of changes around the office. I mean, as far as the HVAC side of the business, obviously that was in the early days. We brought, uh, we brought the guys here, early 90s, I believe, Paul br brought that side of the business. And they were doing about 18 trucks on the road at the time, but it was mostly new construction. So we kind of, Eric, Paul, they kind of wanted to try to get out of that business. And unfortunately, they had a, a family tragedy that uh, had to kind of put the business on hold during the uh, late 90s and 2000s. So uh, Eric came in, rewrote the business plan to make it pretty much residential, and, and that's kind of where we stand today. And we're growing with the amount of services that we provide now. I mean, we're, we're a lot different company than we were even when I was just here two years ago. Wow, okay. So definitely, I mean, I can, I can only imagine, you know, what type of tragedy that could have been and then pausing the, the company for some time, but it's, it's 
very nice to know that, I mean, the company never went 100% over under um, and never really closed its doors, but kind of just laid low for a couple of years. And then now we have, um, you, uh, Eric, was that his name? I'm sorry. Yes. Yep. Eric. That's Paul. So Eric is, yes. Yeah, so he is rewriting the business plan and kind of getting everybody on board. Um, and so the position that you find yourself in today, what, I mean, what essentially do you do as the marketing manager? So basically, I, I handle all all of the marketing as far as social media, our, our newsletters, all our, our new marketing ideas that we're seems to be throwing in every week. You know, I'll go into a little bit what we do. So as far you know, we're very creative here. We obviously use all our so we have a huge social media presence with Facebook, Instagram. YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, we, we obviously work a lot with Google, rely on you guys over at Plumber SEO, uh, Deanna especially, that's our girl over there, she runs our, uh, our AdWords account and obviously our SEO, we're also involved with uh, Google Local Services, Angie's List, who we're not that big of a fan of, Yelp, and um, we also do a little bit more, we do the online blogs, door hangers, yard signs, thank you cards, gifts for customers, uh, constant contact newsletters constantly. We're usually sending those two, three a month. And we also uh, have a, a smile program, which is, you know, if a customer maybe is having a bad day, our techs will fill out a form that is triggered directly to our CSRs and say, you know, a customer, for example, we had this recently, a customer lost a dog. So, you know, she seemed a little sad when our technician went, filled out a smile program, thought it would be nice to send her a box of chocolates. We did about a few days later, and, and the customer was thrilled in tears. So, you know, it's little things like that that we try to do, you know, just to, to serve our customers at a high level. That's amazing. That's so nice. Um, and, and that definitely just builds a community between, or a relationship really between the community and yourselves as a company. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and one thing I can tell you here is we are we are pretty well known because, you know, Staten Island being not as big of a place as people may think, but it seems like everybody knows each other. And the fact that Mr. Campio Paul ha has kept the business in the same spot for, you know, 40 years. We're located on Port Richmond Avenue on the corner, and everybody sees our trucks. Everybody knows our – Paul's – I don't know. Obviously, you guys have seen the logo. Paul's the cartoon image on the logo. You know, everybody sees that. They love it. They instantly think of a Paul. So, you know, our, our presence is definitely felt on the island. Definitely. I had the pleasure of meeting Paul um, over at one of the, um, one of the meetings that, that was held a couple of months back, and he is just the sweetest person. <laughs> he is yeah so he's incredible yeah. <laughs> he's incredible and he's a war vet so he's a hero as well amazing amazing well okay so now jumping into a couple of media questions so you said that sure. your, your social media is huge it's a huge thing for you guys um do you like combine that maybe with direct mail or anything like that Yes, well, especially with the growth now, uh, we have kind of reached out to some other companies to work with our direct mail, and we started some postcard campaigns lately in order to prefer air conditioning season. Excuse me, we the door hangers and direct mail, we try to work hand in hand. So if we're hitting a certain area with our uh, direct mail, we want, to, we want to slam them with our door hangers two weeks later. And then two weeks later, we want to hit them with another direct mail. And then door hangers again. We want to hit those certain areas you know, two, three, four times in that, in such a short time period, you know, this way they get the perception that the, we're this monster company. And meanwhile, obviously we're, we are a big company, but we're a small business continuing to grow. And, and I think the fact that if you continue to hit those same areas over and over and over, that's going to create that presence that you're looking for in, in the community. Awesome. And so then, um, I mean, that's, that's a great tactic, just staying on top of that. And, and I'm sure um, having you as, as a direct marketing manager kind of gives that responsibility away from, from the owners and allows you to really, you know, play with that and be on top of that. I know that there are a lot of owners who may be struggling with trying to juggle too many hats. So what would you just say to anybody who is on the fence with hiring a, a marketing manager to kind of take over this role for them? I'll be quite honest with you. It, it, it's a necessity. You know, I, I look at, especially in New York, 
Like for, for a contracting company, the amount of work for an owner and a service manager, operations manager, is just too much to handle for one person alone. And then you bring the other aspects of the business and, and then the phone calls and the marketing and the purchasing. And, and you just you need to bring in the correct people and people that you could trust to run that side of the business and know that when you're dealing with, you know, say permits, which is something big in New York for an owner, they constantly have to deal with building departments and getting the right permits. You have to know in the back of your mind that you have someone in the office you could trust to run your marketing, run your advertising, know that when you guys are getting slow and you see two, three calls on the board that you got to blast out an email within an hour, you know, promoting a special or, or just gaining interest or say, you know, it depends what you're looking for. If you're looking for estimates and you just want interest, you know what to send out. But it's just important to know as an owner to have that, you know, that, that feel of comfort that you have someone in the office that's constantly on top of it. And I would say if, you, if you're on the fence about that, just looking at our company alone, it, it needs to happen because, you know, before I got here, they were doing very little marketing, but it, it was a small company. So, you, you know, they didn't have the manpower to get to it. And once you bring on the correct staff, I, I, the growth is, is very fast. So one, once you develop that marketing role and really nail down that position, you're going to see instant growth in your company and success. Amazing. And so then how would you say, I mean, especially um, – so you work, you partner with us, uh, like you mentioned, Deanna, she has nothing but positive things to say about you guys. She loves working with you. Um, yeah, she's so, the best. Yes. So um, how about maybe some listeners who may not be using our services or, or anybody's for that matter? Um, how important is it to you know, outsource your internet marketing? It's extremely important. You know, everybody, you know, when you start up your, your internet and your marketing, you, you, you think in the back of your head that, you know, you could just do it on your own. And you, but unfortunately, you know, SEO, we're, we're not experts at, but you guys are. And we, we realized that after constant phone calls I had with Christian before we actually, you know, went on and signed the agreement with you guys, I had multiple phone calls with Christian about what we could do to get our presence on Google, because let's face it, everybody goes to Google. Everybody uses Google. You need a service. You're going to Google. You're looking at the reviews. You're seeing what Google suggests. And you're not going to look past the first page. Where, where It's 2019. It's our generation that, unfortunately, a lot of people just don't have the time or maybe they don't want to. So in order to establish that Google presence, we needed to work with a professional SEO company to get us higher. And you know, when we're typing in Plumber Staten Island and you see us on the front page, that's a big difference than before we, you know, obviously we started working with you guys. And it, it, you can see it, the numbers alone from that we brought in just from organic SEO is, is extraordinary. So without you guys, I don't think we'd have the growth that we have today. There's no question. That's amazing. Thank you. I mean, we love partnering with you guys. Um, and, you know, it's always been our, our goal here to create relationships with our clients and to help them and watch them grow. And so having those conversations, you know, which calls are converting into higher paying leads, which market are we going to be going after? Um, okay, that, you know, that zip code's not working. Let's try another zip code. So um, it's a pleasure working with you. Uh, again, thank you for partnering with us. And so uh, kind of to, to ask about maybe your training. I know that you're the marketing manager, but um, I'm sure you go undergo some, some management training with the company. Um, are there any organizations that the group has or that the company has partnered with? to help, you know, help you with your training? Yeah, so as far as on, on our side in, in the office, what I basically did is I came in here as a CSR, and ever since I came in here, you know, I would attend local uh, webinars that they'd have on the island. They'd always have uh, classes. You know, Paul and Eric are part of a lot of communities here, so there's constant involvement. Paul, you know, is a member of a lot of organizations like the Association of Contracted Plumbers for New York City, Staten Island Rotary Club, uh, he was the YMCA board, past chairman of the YMCA of Staten Island. Uh, he was a member of the Contracting Plumbers Association. He was, uh, I'm trying to think what else. He was a, also uh, a founder of uh, QSC, uh, the Quality Service Contractors. That was Paul. And then Eric himself is also part of the Chamber of Commerce. And he was, you know, a former president of the Young Republicans group. So any, we have a lot of, ne there's a lot of networking that goes on. But as far as training, I would say that um, we're starting to really invest more into that. You know, you, you see with the growth that sometimes it, it, it could, if you move too fast, 
and without the proper training, you know, you see a lot of mistakes. So now we're we're working with individuals like we always have technician training. We have brand companies, you know, such as we work with Amana, Lennox, Bosch, whatever. They'll come in, teach our guys in the morning, maybe go over an installation or whatever. And then as far as the CSRs, you know, we're going to be working with Power Selling Pros coming up, and they're going to nail our CSRs in the front, make sure they're perfect on the phone. So one thing I could say is if you're an employee here and you're invested and you want to grow and you want to better yourself, management here will always provide any training that you request. Amazing. And so, um, you know, these organizations obviously cost money, but, you know, you don't see a return on investment in the front, on the front end of things. You know, these training opportunities, these chamber conferences that you're, you're, you know, the networking groups that you're a part of, um, you don't see a return on investment because that's not a client of yours. But in the long run, all of these organizations really do pay off. Absolutely. You know, you know, I understand, you know, too, small businesses, you know, they look at money and, and they obviously don't always have the budget to, to spend maybe on marketing training. But the investment pays off in the long run when your employees grow and they better themselves. And, you know, those, those networking groups I mentioned, it's amazing the amount of business we get from them. You know, the Chamber of Commerce, the Rotary Club, how many customers actually come from them. So, you know, the networking, the training, they play hand in hand and, and they're so valuable to your, to your business. That's amazing. And so if you can just give me maybe um, an additional nugget of wisdom or insight that you'd like to share maybe to an owner or maybe even to a CSR who, who dreams of maybe even climbing the ladder uh, where he or she finds herself um, or himself in the office to maybe become a marketing manager. I know that a lot of people, um, especially in the millennial age group, you know, they're social media savvy. And so they understand this internet wave. And so I know that they can be an asset to these companies. So these owners, I know that they have these people um, around them they just may not know how to find them so what can you tell to someone to maybe find that person to help them you know the first thing i say is, is keep looking you know it, it for an owner there's there's a lot of options available that for recruiting and we to be honest we don't use any paid recruiting on here we do it all in-house we do it through networking we we do it through social media so just establish i would say your online presence and then the right people will follow as far as bringing in the right talent. And then as far as the CSR side and growing, just my best advice would be to always, always ask questions and always bring ideas. Even if you think they're dumb or if you don't want to mention it, a lot of people may be afraid to mention their ideas. Don't, because this is a type of business that's always changing. And, you know, especially for young people and technology and marketing, it, it, it's something that our generation seems to have a, a good eye on. You know, we, we're very techno technologically savvy. So I, I would say for someone around maybe my age, I'm 27 years old, but I started here when I was 24. So, you know, at that point I was fresh out of college. You know, I was very eager. And this was my one of my first jobs landing out of college. And they gave me a chance. And, and, and once you really continue to work and throw your ideas out there they'll stick the right people will hear them and you're going to get your shot and it's going to be worth every week thank you that's amazing well thank you again for joining us today um it's been a pleasure talking with you i know that there was a lot of valuable information shared that both business owners and employees will benefit from so thank you again for for jumping on this with us no problem alice thank you guys you know for everything you do we, we really appreciate all your help Thank you. Bye. Have a good one. Well, I hope you got amazing value from that interview. If you'd like more ideas, strategies, and techniques on how to more effectively market your plumbing, HVAC, or home services business online, go to plumbingmarketing.net. There you'll find interviews just like this and the opportunity to schedule a time with us to just kind of talk about your business and how we can help you implement similar strategies in your business. So plumbingmarketing.net, head over there now. And I'll talk to you soon.